You motherfuckers are gonna kill all my lilies, parasitic rodents! <laughs> and he's shooting into gopher holes! <laughs> Patrick Stewart standing in his backyard <laughs> Motherfuckers! Shooting into the ground is the funniest fucking thing And this movie knew it was the funniest fucking thing It's so good Parasitic rodents! Hello and welcome back to the 119th episode of Good, Better, Bad, Bad Show where we watch terrible movies And tell you if you should too Your host, Mr. Brian Chiligo Joining you for the first time in the new year with the other host Mr. Kyle Hinton It's 2021 Ooh. Uh, we had a little bit of a break as we were had um, some some stuff going on. We were a little bit late on this episode, but don't yes. m- pay no worry. And is that that's not the right phrase? <laughs> don't worry, <laughs> pay no worry. We will bring you exactly the same content you expect. Yes, uh, we're there, we're still that. making episodes. They were not stopping or anything. It was just a, a little hitch in the in the scheduling. But we're back, and we've got a great film. <laughs> in my Bri- opinion, Brian thinks I think uh, it's, no. I think it's a good film. But it's got some wild shit. It's got some... What did you expect? Hi, honey. I'm home. Man, what a killer day at the office. I shot two terrorists and a commie spy. And there's plenty of stuff to talk about. Uh, I was about halfway through, three quarters through. I was like, this is pretty just good. I kind of think this is good. Uh, it's The ending is bonkers. <laughs> and we'll get to it. And was not what I was expecting <laughs> at all. And it has crazy shit throughout. Yeah. One, there's like three or four scenes. One of them, I was laugh like like literally laughing out loud. Um, but it also has some really good and sweet moments in it. I thought that worked pretty well uh, emotionally, and it's not the movie I thought it was at all going into it. No. Um, so the movie is the 1998 film Safe House, a Showtime movie. Is it? Yes. Oh, okay. So it was made, I guess, with the intention of not having commercials or anything. Thank God. Yeah, there were no, uh, there weren't like obvious commercial breaks yeah. in it, like it some TV. It movies. wasn't like that, uh, that Christmas Rush movie, that TNT. Film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we had very clear commercial cuts in it. No, yeah, this one feels like a pretty, like an actual film, uh, and it's starring. We're burying the lead here. It stars a one, sir. Patrick Stewart. Sir Patrick Stewart. Uh, Captain Picard himself. Blow up the damn ship! No! No! <clears throat> I mean, among many other things, but, uh, you know, most notably uh, Captain Picard. Um, he plays in this film a... Man who is slowly losing his mind. Yes, who is who's developing early onset, well, I say early, I think, onset Alzheimer's. Yeah. Um, and is sort of slowly uh, kind of losing his connection, you know, uh, his ability to kind of remember stuff and all this sort of things. Um, but the big setup, and we'll get to it, is that he is a former secret agent. Or is he? Or was he? <laughs> Maybe. That's the mystery, kind of. Doesn't it strike you as strange that Mom and I never knew you were in the CIA? DIA, DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency. Yeah, yeah it, this entirely is an unreliable narrative, like... <laughs> So it's it's all from his perspective, and he's yeah. the unreliable narrator for this. But you would think like that there are parts of this that are not that it, that just has weird stuff that doesn't really flow with reality, but everything kind of does. Oh yeah, no, I because I, I don't think we're supposed to be. It's not his. I mean, it is kind of fit from his perspective all the time. Yeah. Like we only follow him around. We never see stuff happening from my memory outside of his. But I, I don't think it's necessarily an unreliable narrator in the way that, like, we, like you said, I don't think we're getting anything told, like incorrectly necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but it is. There are moments and stuff that we don't see, and I don't know. It is interesting. We'll get to it. Um, so first thing that kind of confused me is after we. We got this mailed to us. It wasn't a... S- yes. Yes. Yeah. This is this our last mailbag, actually. Yeah. This is a touching story of retired CIA desk worker Patrick Stewart. Who's oh, coping, my God. Who's coping with Alzheimer's diagnosis. <laughs> and turns into a, why are you laughing so much? <laughs> Look at the fucking back of this. It's like Star Trek's next gen. Oh. What was it? First contact where he had the machine yeah, gun? Yeah, where he the gun? Oh. <laughs> But and so you decided, all right, let's do this one. Let's check it out. And I went after after uh, we decided to watch it. And I went to IMDb and was looking at it. It has like a seven point five out of ten on IMDb, <laughs> and it has a seventy percent on Rotten Tomatoes. And I was like, wait a second. Wait. Now it's an audience score yeah. on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not like critics' score. Um, 
And I was like, maybe this is actually will be good. And then we started watching it, and it, I like I said, I think it is kind of good. It's not, it has a lot going for it. Mm -hmm. uh, also, it's crazy, and the ending yeah. is stupid. It, it, Although not officially charged as of yet, the FBI has linked Michael Moore to the deaths of Senators Carcano, McHenry, and Congressman Marvin Haysha, all members of the Joint Select Committee on Intelligence. It's, it's a lot of the wackiness we enjoy, yeah. and a lot of the good kind of yeah. narrative structure that makes for a decent movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my favorite moment, or my first, the first note I have, because <laughs> we go through his morning routine when he first wakes up, and the first note I love, and again, it, it's even funnier now that we know that he was spoilers. He is actually was a like he a DIA agent, I believe. Yeah. He's like, not the CIA defense intelligence agency, yeah. which is like some made up. Yeah, okay. but DIA, DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency. But he was an actual special operative uh, f working for some uh, guy who we'll, we'll talk more about eventually. Um, so that's the spoilers that he is telling the truth about that. It's not just him like creating this, you know, mm -hmm. uh, fantastic scenario. But <laughs> knowing that he is, in fact, a secret agent, I love so much his when we see his closet in his bedroom. It's just like all costumes like it and yeah. but it's like literally <laughs> like the entire village people's yeah. costumes yeah, you know what they did they ra they raided the wardrobe from the uh the holodeck <laughs> yeah yeah for sure because you see his con and, and, and like up in the top row it's all hats there's like a police hat a construction hat a cowboy hat it's like all these different things and it literally and, and it was so funny because i was like oh my god he's got the entire fucking village people in his closet and he even says that later i think i enjoy Going around, laying on the floor of my daughter's 4 by 4 looking like a member of the village people. I don't do this for fun! He's like, I'm <laughs> coming to these fucking uh, doctor's appointments dressed like I'm part of the village people. Uh, and he also sleeps in his closet. Yes. Because he keeps... A dummy in his actual bed. <laughs> yes. So they had, because obviously probably... Patrick Stewart had this body double made for like Star Trek or something, mm -hmm. and they're like, "We'll just use that." So he has this like dummy. It is version pretty of realistic. Oh, it's very realistic looking. Yeah, if you just glanced from a distance, you know, especially if at night when it, if it was dark, you would be like, "Yeah, that's Patrick Stewart laying there." Um, it's pretty great. But he sleeps in this little uh, sleeping bag like bed in the closet. Um, and one of the things that I, I want you to take note of at the beginning is how few post-it notes are on the wall. Because that's another little, there's little details mm -hmm. in this movie that I thought were really good. But right now there's only like a few on the wall behind him that say like, clean your clean clock <laughs> and stuff like yeah. that. It's like <laughs> notes like that. Um, uh, we also find out in this sort of setup that he's very frugal. He clips coupons, mm -hmm. uh, the double buy coupons or whatever he calls Crunch. them. Captain uh, Crunch. Oh, I got two coupons there for Captain Crunch. You want one for little hubby? Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah, for Captain Crunch, and he wants to he wants his his maid to take some for her kid, uh, so we know he's nice. You know, he's considerate of mm. his help, uh, other than other than what's about to happen. He's, yeah, <laughs> to his help. So he's uh, just having breakfast, yeah. yada yada, and then somebody slips in. Somebody starts coming over the fence or comes through the gate, and he's dressed like a maintenance and guy or something. Got, he's got the crazy security system. Yeah, which all of his cameras in his security system apparently <laughs> they look like. I mean, they're. Obviously, it's it's it, in the movie. It's it's um, in the production. It's somebody like just with a zoom lens camera, like recording it, and then they put that into the security yeah. footage. But it's no security camera that anybody would ever have. Any security camera is just a wide static thing, mm -hmm. maybe with some digital zooming and stuff. But this is like pushes in all the way across his backyard to this guy <laughs> coming through the gate and like zooms out as he walks close. I was like, that's not how security cameras operate. Uh, especially nope. not back then. This guy slips in. He's got a, he's got a silence pistol. And since it's a movie, silence means super it's literally silence, <laughs> literally silent. Uh, and he, uh, he breaks in and they're, and they're, uh, Oh, uh, Picard gets the drop on him. Yes, though. yes. And then, uh, but then he doesn't shoot him, and he ends up grabbing the maid. The bad guy does, and has his gun to the maid's head, and she's losing her fucking mind because yeah. she thinks she's about to die. Uh, and then uh, they start. I, I think he just shoots at him. Like Picard's yeah. like Teflon coated devastators. They'll go through her and you like butter. <laughs> and then he starts shooting them, and they're paint pellets. Yeah, yeah. And this whole thing is just uh, drills to keep Patrick Stewart sharp. Yes, but he didn't tell the maid about no, this, so she no. literally thought she was going yes. to die. And she was like, "Okay, GTFO, I'm out." <laughs> yeah, yeah. She fucking quits immediately. Um, uh, and that's where we're introduced to his daughter, uh, mm -hmm. who's helping to kind of take care of him. 
um, his or his daughter shows up and it's like you can't keep doing this, you know. I can't, you're, you're, I can't, I'm not gonna be able to get help for you if you're fucking making all the help think that you're gonna get, yeah. you're gonna murder them. You can't keep tying maids to water heaters, holding them at gunpoint, throwing them into the pool. We're lucky nobody's pressed charges. Oh, and also we're introduced to the guy who helped him, yes, who was the Stuart, bad guy, Stewart or whatever, Stewart. So, so he's like. I guess like the handy guy or something He's like that. He's a pool cleaner. He cleans He's pools, a pool cleaner, yeah, but he also yeah. does other random stuff for cash. Yeah. Yeah, but he's the pool cleaner. Stewart is my least favorite character yeah, in this movie yeah. because every time he's on camera, he just does impressions of yes. other celebrities, and it's really annoying. And he mainly does Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart. All right, Andy, I thought we said no more drills. Jimmy Stewart coming in talking like this. What's going on? <laughs> Yeah, his, his Jimmy Stewart is not much worse than yours. <laughs> um, he also does like, uh, I think he does Pacino at one point or De Niro. He does somebody, like he does several. Why did you say my Patrick, my <laughs> Jimmy Stewart was bad? I mean, it wasn't great. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> it wasn't great. Uh, so this is a point where they're introducing whether or not he is or isn't a secret agent. He goes to the doctor. He has a doctor's appointment mm. and they do like a PET scan and they're like, his scans look pretty normal, but he's, he's like, you know, he's losing his memory. This is, you know, all yeah. of his symptoms say early onset, uh, dementia or Alzheimer's or whatever. Um, and, uh, so, and like he, you know, the doctor's like, he tells us, you know, that he's a, was a secret agent, and I, which I was like, why is he telling them that? That seems weird. If he was in fact a secret agent, I don't think he would tell them that. So your father was an agent with military intelligence. He was a PR man for the United States Information Service. He had nothing to do with the military. Like, because that's his whole thing is he's like keeping all this secret and he has these secrets and stuff. But he also apparently just tells his doctor, no, I was a secret agent for the, the DIA or whatever. But they're like, uh, so they, they're they introducing now to us, the audience, that maybe this isn't true. Maybe he's not actually, mm. uh, you know, wasn't actually a secret well, agent. But also we've come seen here him completely dressed like a psycho. Yes, he dresses, he's dressed as a utility worker. With like a fake mustache yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And and when they drive there, he lays down with a periscope. With a periscope in the back seat and watches things with the periscope. It's pretty great. Um, but it's it's also starting, so it's starting to make us question whether or not yes. he is a, a, an agent or not. But we did see before this, we saw him do his little I think it was before this where his computer thing. Yeah, well, there's also a news thing going on that says this guy was was killed in an unrelated thing. Yeah. And he's one of the names that he has marked down on his list. Of, like, his former teammates or whatever. And, yeah, he crosses out this name. um, And, uh, but, but, so on his computer every day, he does this thing where he, like... It starts a... It's like a dead man switch countdown. Mm. And he has to go in and put his password in and then, like... Drag a, and drop a puzzle, a puzzle like like a, a some sort of Japanese symbol or something. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it's like some little symbol, and he has to get just right to stop this countdown for some sort of launch. Is what it says. We yeah. don't know what it is, but he's doing this. So I'm like, okay, well, he's not a secret agent. He came up with some really weird shit to put on his computer <laughs> to like make it look like he is a secret agent or whatever. Um, uh, but he's. I guess I also have to talk about too how much Patrick Stewart commits to this role. He fucking commits so hard. He has this line when they're driving either to the doctor or back where she's talking to him about his old job. And he's like, man, what a killer day at the office. I shot two terrorists and a commie spy. <laughs> and it's just Patrick Stewart. <laughs> so over the top. I love it so much. It, I don't know. There's just something about Patrick Stewart that just doesn't feel like he can do. Definitely not slapstick. <laughs> I disagree just, because the next scene we're about to get is the best scene in this whole fucking movie. So after his mom, his, his, or his not his mom, his daughter is, she's talking to her husband about how they might have to like, you know, have him committed basically. He said if he becomes too much to handle, we might want to consider a locked facility. If they can't find somebody else to watch him and, and, and take care of him. Um, uh, and the, their bedroom in the scene where they're talking about this is the most painfully 90s decorated bedroom I've ever seen. They have this horrifying painting on the wall over their bed and their 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 blankets are like the pattern is I don't know how you would sleep in this bedroom. The 90s were a weird time. <laughs> um but they're interviewing then we get this fun comedy montage yeah, scene. Yeah. They're interviewing uh oh this isn't the scene I was thinking of but it's coming up later. They're interviewing like a bunch of potential 
mm. uh, housekeepers and helpers or whatever. And Patrick Stewart's running around in the background shooting stuff. Yes, it's incredible. <laughs> He's rolling through the background, like doing combat rolls and target shooting in his backyard through this whole scene. Look, I love it. But I, I, I find it highly... I don't know how far out of the city they are, but I find it highly suspect that he's just going around shooting rounds after rounds in a, it, it's, it's a neighborhood. We see the end of the movie. We see like a helicopter shot. Yeah. There are houses on either yeah. side of him, like right the, the, there. The fact that they don't have police responding constantly yeah. is. Yeah. Apparently his neighbors are like, man, <laughs> we're used to it. He's just an eccentric. Dude. Yeah. Um, but he's, <laughs> it's, I love his ta his tactical jumps. Like he has like this black sweater and these yellow, like, <laughs> shooting glasses he looks incredible um but nobody is a good fit and it's again it's all very like i was like is this a comedy now because like the inter this interview it's like something out of like a sitcom or something where they're all like over the top terrible options or whatever mm -hmm. um and it's the one guy's i know how to give a real good attitude adjustment <laughs> That's probably all that boy needs out there. It's like, I'll I'll teach him a fucking lesson. I'll beat the shit out of that old man. <laughs> it's like, oh God. <laughs> but they finally land on this one woman. Um, and I don't remember this actress's name, but the character's name is Andy, mm. uh, who she has a background in psychology or something like that. And anyway, she's with background in psychology with a specialty in like uh geriology, so like study of old people, I, I guess. I'm getting my PhD in behavioral psych with an emphasis in gerontology. I'm sure I can yeah so it's like literally they <laughs> she manufactured as we'll find spoilers like the perfect possible background yeah. for herself for this role um but she uh uh so her, her name's andy and she's gonna be his new like live-in maid and, and helper and that sort of thing it seems like a great job to have with a fucking degree in psychology and a specialty <laughs> yeah um and then so he's introduced to her and i love this scene because it's again i love yes. patrick stewart <laughs> She, he's like they're like uh, uh, the, uh, his name is Mason this movie yes. they're like Mace this is Andy uh, she's gonna be your new live, you know maid or whatever um, and he goes okay what kind of name is Andy for a girl anyway it's short for Andrea uh, <laughs> and she's like what is Mace short for it's short for in your face <laughs> what kind of a name is Mace it's short for in your face it's so good. It's so funny in your face. And then he walks away. And I'm like, God damn. I, I hope this whole movie, rest of this movie is just Patrick Stewart fucking like dunking on people. <laughs> just like in progressively stupider oh. ways. I love it so much. Um, but then it gets really, uh, this movie does go pretty dark and heavy at times with Patrick Stewart actually coming to terms with and realizing that he is suffering yeah, from he's, Alzheimer's. He's losing control in yeah. certain ways. Yeah, and he's, you know, like this uh, first scene is him, one of the first scenes, he gets like a pamphlet and he's reading yeah. through it and he's, um, you know, he's he's trying to like, he's like doing looking these at the symptoms. Tests. So he's like doing these like self-tests where you're like remember numbers. Remembering and, yeah. numbers backwards, presidents, subtracting 10, presidents like names, in chronological like, yeah. order. Yeah. Clinton, Bush, Reagan, Carter, Ford, Nixon. Um, but as and and it starts off okay, but then as the movie goes, it gets progressively worse, mm. and and we see him descend into like sadness over this, and it's like kind of intense, yeah. and, and like in a good way, like it works kind of well. You're like fuck, and again, Patrick Stewart's a good enough actor that he pulls it off. Put me on any pill you want, I'll take it. No argument. I can't live like this. Um, but it is tonally there is some. Because we do go from some of the most ridiculous slapstick to like intense scenes of Patrick Stewart crying in bed, like yeah. sobbing. Well, we over. go from him shooting golfer. <laughs> that's the best scene in this whole movie. We're not there yet, but that's the best scene in this whole fucking so like, movie. He'll go. He'll go around shooting up his backyard and yeah. be like sobbing in his like closet yeah. bed. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Um, as there's this piece of art in the in his living room the whole time on the wall that is like a bunch of tally marks yeah. on like a giant, and I was really hoping that it was gonna come up in conversation one time, and he was gonna be like, "That's all. That's a tally mark for every man I murdered when, when I was a special I fit him in because <laughs> it's like a hundred tally marks or something like that. I was really hoping that was what it was gonna be. Um. Um. Oh. So then uh, so the new maid is we got to set up their 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 tension with each other, mm. you know, initially. 
And she shows up and she's going to change his whole diet. Yes. And she's yes, got all she's this. She's making like some sort of uh, like tie almost. I don't know what it is. But yeah, she's doing like macro nutrients, blah, blah, blah. So it's like Adam all Stewart's healthy having food. none of that shit. He goes and gets some Twinkies and M&M's and Coca-Cola. And Coca-Cola. <laughs> Which is so funny because they make this like it's this whole thing where as like he's like eats terribly. In the last scene, we watched him like pounding out a chicken breast to like make a nice dinner for himself. And then now it's like, wait, now he's a five year old. Like he's, he's like also ridiculously fit for a man who's supposed to be in his 60s yeah oh yeah well because he works out every day we yeah. see numerous workout shots of him like doing chin-ups and and, and running on the treadmill and stuff so you're um, telling me i can have all the twinkies and soda i want i mean if you work out for three <laughs> hours a day yeah man um but he i love i never knew i needed this in my life but this maybe movie made me realize that i needed to see patrick stewart sir patrick stewart pick up a twinkie with chopsticks and suck the cream out of it. <laughs> this movie, I was like, that's a thing I never knew I needed. Thank you for this movie. And, and thank you for the uh, fully design. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> sucking the cream out of a Twinkie. Patrick Stewart, night, <laughs> night Patrick Stewart. <laughs> It's incredible. Uh, uh, so then I love to, uh, <laughs> we have to, we keep talking about their, or their whole, there's a bunch of tension in their relationship and she wants him, he wants her to go get the mail at one point. I just got to talk about this because this one line, he wants her to go get the mail and she won't go get the mail unless he like gets dressed so they can go out or whatever uh, and go for a walk. <laughs> and he goes, she's like, this is the deal. You get dressed. I'll get the mail. No clothes. No mail. Uh, how about this trade? We'll do this. And he goes, he turns around to her and goes, This is the deal. I'll get my own mail. You go fuck yourself. <laughs> he drops the F bomb a lot uh, in this movie, and I love it every single time. Well, yeah, you got that showtime, so, you know, some people are paying for oh, it. Oh, yeah, you're you, paying for those F bombs. The way, the way it works is you're pay, paying for the lack of censorship in the language, or you're paying for the lack of censorship. In boobs. boobs. No boobies in this one. No, no that's reserved for HBO. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then she goes out to run some errands and he inspects her room. Uh, and we get the classic hijinks of him like going through her underwear drawer, <laughs> like, what is this? Um, but because he's. Yeah, because he's. Because he's, he's uh, suffering from yeah, Alzheimer's. He's losing it. He, he leaves, leaves metal detector. Yeah. <laughs> in her room and she's like you left this in my room you were clearly glowing through my shit um oh but that's also after she or at one point they uh and maybe it's not afterward it might be whatever um they do another he does another training exercise and the guy breaks in and then she wails on him with a golf club yeah. and almost kills him <laughs> Because she is not aware of these. Again, he doesn't like tell right the, in the help. Kidneys. Yeah, she fucking destroys this guy with a golf club. Um uh, but then, so now we've set up this tension between them. We have to sort of develop their relationship to a better place now. Mm -hmm. And this is where they make, they're making dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, she makes dinner for him and he's, uh, again, and now he's, but he's being, you know, better about it uh, and being less of an asshole. Um, and, and, <laughs> uh, and, and she's like, he's, they're drinking something like tea or whatever. Mm -hmm. And she has a line about how it's okay. I guess you can have a glass of wine every now and then. Mm -hmm. It won't kill you. I guess a glass of wine from time to time won't kill you. Wow. And he makes this face when she's like, you can have a glass of wine. He's like, ooh. Wine. <laughs> and then he goes, he says. In that case, I am in charge of dessert. And I'm like, oh, God. no. And the sexy sax starts playing. Yep. <laughs> the sexy saxophone kicks in. Oh, my God. Oh, this is obscene. Mm. Don't fight it. Just enjoy it. And I was and like, oh, no. There's uh, moans of ecstasy. Yeah. And then, but it becomes very clear yeah. right away what this gag is. But yeah, we cut and we see like shoes on the floor and clothes and stuff. And we're like, oh, no, Patrick Stewart. She's like, 20 and you're patrick stewart so you're eternally 75 <laughs> um and uh but no they're just enjoying ice cream yeah. i think out of like like brandy snifters yeah, yeah. or something i don't know what it's a weird choice of a 
bowl but, uh, there. But... In this scene, is it, this movie has a lot of nice touches when it comes to showing like the degradation of his mind. Yeah, and stuff. Oh so, yeah, this scene. Like yeah, in this so scene, sad. like he's playing guitar and yeah. stuff, and he is repeating the same question to her. Yeah, he asks her a question, it. or he says something to her, and he and he asks her a question, and then he starts playing guitar again, and then he like can't. He like he's like what, mm-hmm. and then he kind of like sits there, and then he turns and asks her the same question. You should be out dancing on a night like this, not babysitting an old fart like me. And then he's like, "Wait, did I already ask you that?" And it's like, "Oh God, this is so sad." Yeah. It's, I mean, that's, again, those scenes in this movie actually do work really well. I said that already, didn't I? And are really um, like endearing and sad. Uh, and 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 I think would work overall if where this movie went was where I thought it was going, but this movie does not go where I thought it was going, which I guess is a compliment, but I don't think so. Um, uh, then he goes to the doctor as a as a, as a up rabbi, as an Orthodox Jew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like as a straight up, as a, yeah, he's got the curls and, and everything. everything. Oh, it's, it's like, great. oh, what are we doing? Um, but then as he's driving home. He sees a bomb. Yes. Under the seat of his daughter's SUV yes. that she's driving. Listen to me, goddammit! There's enough C4 in your seat to blow both of our asses to Pacoima. I mean, he freaks her out. Yeah, he's like, there's a bomb. And she's like, shut up, there's not a bomb. So and then he he uh, he shows her with the periscope. The, ter- yeah. the periscope yeah. Uh, so he he gets the wheel jack, she yeah. gets out, and then he's like, give me my toolkit. I'm gonna to, to disarm the bomb. <laughs> I'll get the toolkit out of the jack and then get out of here. And yeah. of course it's fake. It's fake. And she fucking loses her mind again. Cause again, it's, it's, it's like the boy who cried wolf kind of thing where he keeps over and over again. And even this time she's like, I didn't believe him. And then she's like, I can't believe I actually bought this bullshit for a second. Cause she actually did believe him for a minute. It was a, it was a box with flashing lights. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looks like a bomb without knowing any better. Um, uh, C4. C4 to your seat to blow us all the kingdom come. <laughs> uh, and I love to. So then uh, one of the big things, the steps that the that Andy's trying to make with him is get him to go outside because mm. he's a recluse. He never leaves the house because he's scared that, again, this yeah, whole he's, time. He's like Howard Hughes almost. Well, and and, and it is assuming that it's, you know, that, that the, the special ops thing isn't a lie or made up. He's His people that used to be in his unit or whatever are being killed and he's worried that he's going yeah. to be killed next. Um so he doesn't want to go outside or anything like that. <laughs> but I love there's this delightful scene of her leading him out of the house in an entire bomb unit yes. <laughs> suit. Yes. <laughs> and it's just Patrick Stewart like waddling in a bomb unit being <laughs> led by his hand. It's so adorable. I love it so much. Oh, it's so great. Um, and then this is the scene with the, the with gophers. The gophers. This is not even joking. The best scene in this whole movie, and it's incredible. And I was not expecting so, it at uh, all. The uh, Andy is on the phone with somebody, right? Yeah, she's on the phone with somebody. And Patrick Stewart just <clears throat> runs out with his gun. <laughs> you, you motherfuckers are gonna pay for ruining my you lawn. Mother, you motherfuckers are gonna kill all my lilies. Friggin' parasitic rodents. You motherfuckers are gonna kill all my lilies, parasitic rodents! <laughs> and he's shooting into gopher holes. <laughs> Patrick Stewart standing in his backyard, <laughs> motherfuckers! Shooting into the ground is the funniest fucking thing, and this movie knew it was the funniest fucking thing. It's so good. Parasitic rodents! <laughs> it's fucking great. Oh, uh, fuck. I love that scene so much. And then I love she comes out and she's like, Jesus Christ. What are you, a branch Davidian? Where the hell do all these come from? And so, he's got a lot of guns. He has, a, we see, a, he has a closet in his office. And they, he also has just, pistols just everywhere. Oh, yeah. He has guns hidden everywhere mm-hmm. in the house. There's a fun montage later where they're collecting all the guns and are like opening pots and there's guns in them and shit. Um, but yeah, he has guns everywhere and he also has a whole armory in his office. How did you get all this stuff? Oh, so he has the, 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 okay. So that thing we talked about earlier, like the dead man switch, Mm -hmm. there's a scene now where he's forgetting the password for it. Yes. So he's, and I was like, you got to do something about that. Cause we don't know what this is right now. Cause it says launch. Yeah. Which we're like, fuck, is it going to shoot nukes or or something? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And he like, he fails a bunch of times and finally gets it at the last second. I was like, but buddy, you need to 
fi- yep. figure something out about that. That's that's a problem. And then, and then we get in, we, we start getting more and more into like th- this relationship with Andy, where it's like, okay, I'm confused. Is she trying to seduce him? Yeah. Well, that's the thing, actually. Their relationship, you you can't tell if it's supposed to be like veering towards like a sexual thing or like a relationship thing. But I think it rides the line in a way that's just sort of sweet. And, like, it does feel like they're slightly flirtatious with each other without being weird or creepy. And it's also not, it never goes that direction. Like, they never actually hook up. or You know what I mean? Like, but they do mm. kind of have this flirtatious relationship. And I think it actually works pretty well. Uh, and, they're, and the way their relationship develops... And where I was hoping this movie was going to end, I was like, this actually all works really well. Like when they're, the scene you're thinking about is when they go dancing together and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I think it's a really sweet scene of her like dancing with him. Um, and then it gets really cheesy for like 30 seconds when he's like, that's not dancing. This isn't dancing. Woo. This is dancing. <laughs> This, this is, is dancing. dancing, and then it's sexy sax kicks in with like and then, a terrible and then drum he machine. He wakes up the next morning in a bed, and you're like, "Oh, yeah, oh, wait. oh no, it's just fake Patrick." It's Stewart. the dummy. <laughs> he woke up in bed next to the dummy. But yeah, I actually liked all that stuff a lot. Um, but oh, so I mentioned it earlier again. And other scenes that are really effective is that he he sleeps in his closet, and I said at the beginning there was like a couple post-it notes on the wall behind yeah, him. Now, now at this it, point. The entire yeah. wall it is looks like post-it a calendar notes. almost. Yeah, yeah. The entire wall is post-it notes, and it's a good, again, a good sort of subtle, you know, little detail to add to your storytelling and add to your narrative. Where it's like, okay, people thought about this movie. This wasn't mm-hmm. like a complete like just bullshit cash grab or but something. He he he's losing it more now. For, yeah, for for some reason or not. Well, I mean, obviously it's you know degradation. But like, what what he's gone to his psychologist, and he's like, I soon found that. I- I had to work my ass off just to get through the day. It's it's to the point where I need help. Yeah. And so he gets on a drug that's I guess helping him to a degree. He can he can put together his pistol again. Again, yeah. Oh, we also we didn't talk about the one scene where he um there's there's a bunch of fallout where they're like we can't do these drills anymore. Yeah, and then and then they play poker. Like they're trying to find other ways to distract him. That, that cowboy costume. The cowboy is costume great. is fucking incredible. <laughs> um, but then they're playing poker, but he's still upset about it. So then they plan. Uh, Stuart and and what's her name and, plan yeah. a, a, a training drill without telling him. Good lord! And they break into the house dressed as special ops people, and they fucking shoot him with paint pellets, and he loses his mind and is like sobbing over it. Yeah. And it's like, what did you guys think was gonna happen? Also, you're lucky he didn't murder you. Yeah. How did they know he was gonna get a gun that didn't have real bullets in it? Did they replace all of his guns with? fake bullets or like what because he just grabs a gun and shoots at them but it's oh it's wax bullets so it's fine he could have just murdered them <laughs> like mm-hmm. okay great good call uh, um also got to talk about this scene that's really great and adorable this movie the ending is just fucks up an otherwise delightful film uh he he, he at one point he <laughs> makes dinner for her yes with like the new fancy like whatever like japanese cuisine or whatever it is that fits into like her dietary guidelines she set out for him and she comes over she's like oh look you made dinner oh you're doing such a good job or whatever and leaves and walks away and after she walks away he's standing there and he just goes like yeah and it's so cute it's so adorable and i was like fuck man that's a good scene uh and then everybody dies at the end spoilers fucking movie what the fuck <laughs> god damn um but this is where i started to figure out maybe she's just not on the up and up i don't remember what it was that clued me in but i was like fuck is she gonna end up being a double agent well when she uh, gets into his room and finds everything and then she doesn't like yeah try to be like you, you should be committed yeah um and then uh so basically i don't remember what happens here oh this is where they take all of his weapons yeah uh, it's because of the whole gun thing that yeah, yeah he shot at the, the neighbor's daughter she took him out yeah she took him out to walk around like to go for a walk mm-hmm. and he's got wearing progressively less armor each time they yeah. go out and then but he, he almost gets hit by a car and he fires at the car like 20 times luckily not killing the neighbor's daughter um who apparently can't drive because she just right yeah. right at these people um and uh, but he ends up not, you know, and they, they come and they're like, we got to take all your weapons. And this is the infamous Katana scene that made us watch this fucking yes. movie. <laughs> so like his son is taking or uh, son in law yeah. is taking the Katana down and Patrick <laughs> Stewart just explodes. On his, he's like, this is 
300 years old. No way am I allowing you to take No, that is a 300 year old weapon. <laughs> I, I cannot let you take it. You and then he just it. he just takes it out of the sheath and puts the blade up to his neck. Slow mo spins <laughs> to the neck and then he pulls it down and does the coolest cool guy <laughs> like sheathing of it. It's so amazing. I say this with 100% both irony and seriousness. In that scene, Patrick Stewart was a weeb. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I will say that that scene is a lot less funny in the context of the film because we I had no idea that this movie what, was about a man with that, dementia yeah. and like Alzheimer's <laughs> who's struggling to hold on to anything. And like that scene makes a lot more sense in that context and again is less funny. It's still kind of funny because it's just it's just Patrick Stewart like clumsily wielding a katana. Mm. Um, but man, yeah, it's it's something yeah. else. We're down to just him on the list now. Everybody, all of his other uh, people have been killed. Yeah, and Andy kind of like figures out the secret, this not a secret room, but like the room he he's tells been her about it, hiding behind. Well, after she gets into the room and like looks at his tapes. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that yeah? I guess it is after. Well, yeah. anyways, he tells her at one point because he, he trusts her, and he's like, "I got this dead man switch. Mm -hmm. I got a bunch of money. I want to run away to Aruba but or whatever." She, I have two million of the Grand Cayman. And a house in British Virgin Gorda that no one knows about. He says all this stuff, and she's like, uh -huh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is not like, not like, okay, you're just a crazy person. She's like, oh, wow, that's very interesting. That's, please tell me more. Yeah, yeah. And then he finds her that night snooping on his computer, looking at his bank accounts. Yeah. She tries to take the money out of his bank account or something and, like, fails the password check. And he's, like, holding his katana, like, watching her. He's like, hmm. <laughs> Which is bullshit. He never kills anybody with that fucking katana, Kyle. It would have been great. What is the point of that being the one weapon he gets to keep and then not using it? They, they, they Horseshit. They could have, you know, just make make a head of Andy. and Because they yeah. had one for Patrick Stewart. Fucking horseshit. It's fucking horseshit. Um, also, he has a line where he yells at her. This is after the whole shooting the, at the neighbor thing where he, he goes, Miss Mary Poppins had to take me for fucking walks in the hills. Every line he yells in this movie is incredible. Um, but he has a plan. They're going to go to some property he has on some island. Yeah, he, like I said, he owns a property in some island, and they're going to escape. Uh, and the, the next day, they're getting ready to go pack. He has a nightmare, which is great. Um, I love the cut, the match, kind of a match cut they do. where yeah. he, he, He's going, and he's like, whoa, there's a new, who's this? pool cleaner you're not Stuart. and then andy walks out and then the he goes i thought you worked for the mail or the post office and the guy's like i don't work for them ah and machine guns andy <laughs> and she falls in the pool dead and then patrick stewart's under the water and he comes up and breaks through the surface gasping mm -hmm. and then it cuts directly from that and to him waking like, up yeah. gasping that's pretty good yeah, it's pretty good stuff um he also follows her the next day because now he's suspicious because he yeah. saw her trying to get into his bank account so she's like i gotta run errands and he's like all right i'm um, follows her terribly he follows right behind her i, I love how he has this computer like that's telling him to, like the proper 30 distance. meters like, that's 30 not, meters that's not, 15 that's not meters. meters you're not 30 meters away you're not even close <laughs> yeah i love well at one point he's like right behind her he's like he, he pulls around a truck and is flooring it right behind <laughs> her and i'm like what are you okay good job man Uh, and so, but he goes, so he breaks into her apartment and, and and this is how we know her whole life's a lie because yeah. he breaks in and her apartment's full of junk food, Kyle. And she's a big health nut. How <laughs> dare she? She has Twinkies and shit everywhere. And he's like, what the heck? Um, and I was like, okay, this is an interesting twist that she's evil, I guess is interesting. But to me, the much more interesting movie of this is that he's actually not lying. He is a secret agent. She is... Uh, not evil. She's just the helper. What? Like she's literally just who we thought she was for the beginning of it, and that he realizes. And then somebody does come to attack him, and she helps him fend them off or whatever. Like they work together to fend off these guys attacking them. Mm -hmm. And then he realizes that he does need help because you know he's a, he learns to kind of let his defenses down and not only rely on himself. And, and, and he has to work with her. Um, and she learns that he's not just like a crazy old guy, that he was telling the truth. And she has to help keep his secrets. And they live together and they have a nice, you know, whatever, until he passes away. 
Like, that's the movie I thought we were getting. And I was like, I'm here for this. And you're doing a lot of this character work early that makes me think this is what I want. And then the movie's like, no, no. she's actually just evil. No. I was like, what the fuck are we doing here? So then she gets home. Um, and he, she's like, I got to take a shower. You get go get some food and then we'll we'll go. And then he's going through her stuff, and she gets out of the shower in three seconds. Yeah. Because she comes back, her hair is wet, like she has yeah. been in the shower, but it's been like four seconds. And he finds her ID, and something there doesn't match up? I don't even know. She, her, it just looks like it's her name. Yeah. It doesn't betray anything, except for that the picture on the ID looks like it was generated by a computer. I don't know yeah. what that was. Well, anyway, she has a gun now. And yes. And she is... She has the machine gun yeah. thing, the Uzi or whatever. She wants the dead man switch so she can, I guess, bribe the guy who's running for president. I'll have that dead man code now if you don't mind. Or oh, she either or works for that guy, yeah, or she wants to, yeah, bribe that guy. One of the two, because she she wants the code for the dead man switch so she can, um, mm -hmm. because oh, we never even explained what the dead man switch actually does, which is what he told her uh, a couple nights ago, is that it's not like launching missiles. It's all the information on this guy who we've before yet not mentioned, uh, Michael Moore. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's his last name is Michael Moore, like all one word, who is running for president, who was the head of Patrick Stewart's old like special ops. Yeah. And Patrick group. Stewart has all this, all these documents of every like crime thing he committed. Yeah, yeah. Like, like hits he ordered and like, he's and, basically responsible for murdering several other politicians. Yeah, and and stuff it'll be like sent that. out to like every major media outlet on the East West coast. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Around the world. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's, and the dead man switch is to prevent that from happening, I guess, as, as he yeah. says, his life insurance policy. Yeah, is basically the, the guy knows that Patrick Stewart has something on him, so he can't kill him because he has this dead man switch that if he kills him, it'll send out. It's like mutually assured destruction kind of thing. But she's got Patrick Stewart at gunpoint, and then Stu, in great timing. <laughs> it's like, hey, guys, what's going on? Why, oh, Andy, you got a gun. I thought we were going to say there's no more drills. No more drills. All right, Andy. I thought we said no more drills. She's like, this isn't a drill. And the, <laughs> yeah. This isn't a drill. But, but there's one gun that we saw earlier that yep. you didn't catch. It's like it's in a holder yeah, under the sink. Like taped under the sink. He pulls it out and shoots her. Blasts her in the chest and kills her. Fucking boom. She's dead. He does get winged. Yeah, she, and she sprays everywhere as yep. she's dying, blows up the entire kitchen. So now Stu's dead, she's dead, uh, and Patrick Stewart calls the cops and is like, Yes, there is a dead woman in my kitchen. Uh, there's a dead woman in my kitchen. And they're like, who is this? He's like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's so yeah, sad. Because he keeps, he so keeps repeating, there's a dead woman in my kitchen. And it, he, he says that to the 911 operator, the dispatch, yeah. and then they're trying to get more information, and he's just he's he's gone. He's gone. It's so sad, Kyle. And then he wa and then and then the credits roll. No, then a thing pops up, a fucking quote by Henry Goddamn Kissinger <laughs> of all fucking people that says even a paranoid man can have enemies or something like that. What? A and then and that's how the movie ends. And then it cuts back to an aerial shot of Patrick Stewart standing there staring at Stewart's dead body in his yeah. pool, and I'm like. That's the end of your movie? <laughs> Patrick Stewart fully lost his mind and everybody's, and everybody's dead. dead? Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, it, they did The Departed well way before The Departed. Yeah. Good Lord. It's like a fucking nightmare ending. It's so sad. Also, he checks her pulse when he comes back after it's she like, she's blood she, everywhere. everywhere. She's a puddle of blood, and she got shot like twice in the chest. Yeah, but he checks her pulse, and I was like, like a, "She's dead, Jim." <laughs> wrong, wrong, Captain. But she's dead, Jim. Oh God, damn! That ending is so. Also, he goes to the computer after he shoots her and arms the oh, thing. Yeah, he sends it out, but. It, it's supposed to do it automatically. Why does it yeah. need to arm it to send it when it's it's on a dead man's whatever? It doesn't matter. But yeah, he yep. sends it out. So now the secrets, uh, the guy's gonna get gets arrested or whatever. The the presidential candidate gets arrested. Um, but that ending is so upsetting because <laughs> again, I actually liked most of the movie. Yeah, and yeah. then I get to the it, end and I'm like, what? It's just all bad. <laughs> It's so sad. It's such a left turn that you yeah. went off a cliff. You're like, why did... Okay, I guess that's what we're ending this. All right, fine. Uh, this film is... Uh, 
just it's mostly good, but then there's like a bad, but it's then good it's bad. wild. It's definitely good bad oh, definitely because good we have bad. Patrick Stewart shooting at gopher hills and cussing <laughs> at people. He says, to, I mean, you get to hear Patrick Stewart say "fuck you" like eight times in this movie. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> you motherfuckers are gonna kill all my lilies. Uh, yeah, shooting at gopher hills, doing tactical role, tactical roles in his backyard. Um, but it's also just generally kind of good, like mm-hmm. you said, for a lot of it. Uh, mixed in with dumb wacky shit which which helps because it's it's a bit longer of a film than we're used to this it is almost was, two uh, hours yeah. yeah it was like 150 uh and you would think it would get somewhat boring at points not really it didn't it, it, no i don't i never got bored at least during it um i thought it, it carried its momentum pretty well uh but then the end is just like what, what? why <laughs> why was that the ending we went with all right i mean sure thanks showtime oh god he's trying to depress me um but yeah i would say good bad so there you go. That is Safe House, 1998, starring Sir Patrick Stewart. Um, Kyle, as always, they can, our good fans, you can support us on Patreon.com slash GB or BB uh, for however much you want. That'd be great. Uh, we also have merch at uh, what was it, uh, tpublic.com yes. and then search for Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad. Anything, <clears throat> mugs, t-shirts, masks. Anything you want. Um, we also... Um, no, that's it. That's the two ways to support us. <laughs> uh, we have Twitch channels, uh, twitch.tv slash gbrbb underscore Kyle, gbrbb underscore Brian. Brian. Stream stuff occasionally. I need to get back on that. <laughs> yeah, we haven't done it recently. Uh, no, Katie and I did a cookie baking stream on Christmas. You did Hades, right? Uh, yeah, a couple hours the other day. Um, but no, we did a, like a big, long cookie baking stream. Uh, mm-hmm. We're also going to do a, a Jackbox. Anyways, just check them out. You can find us there. I have a podcast called This Film Is It, where we talk about movies that are based on books. When this episode is out, the most recent episode will have been... Fuck. <laughs> I don't remember because we're in a break. Shit. Oh, The Phantom Toll Booth, which I don't know what that is. It's a animated movie from like the 70s digitopolis where figures are freaky numbers can be added to subtracted from divided into multi applied by crossed out and erased okay your brain turned into patrick stewart right? yeah well oh, it's it, well because it was trying to remember the phantom toll booth which is a thing that nobody's <laughs> ever heard of so uh which is yeah it's like an animated kids movie from the 70s it looks trippy so mm-hmm. that's the episode that's out uh when this is out i believe uh that's it uh, the, the Happy New Year. Thanks for uh, sticking around, uh, and we'll see you for the rest of 2021. Until next time, keep watching movies. Especially Safe House. It's on Tubi. It's on Tubi for exactly. free. Go check it out. Tubi's Patrick a great Stewart. service until I guarantee you they're going to go full like a subscription service. I don't know. They, they have too much point. garbage on there. Yeah, they, <laughs> it's nothing but garbage, Kyle. Well, like, so is Amazon Prime. Whoa, whoops. They have good <laughs> content, though. Tubi has zero good content, I'm fairly certain. It's like Probably. only the garbage side of Amazon. I'm, I'm pretty... Tubi, if you want to sponsor us. I mean, you're you're primo for what we're doing so yes. many of our recent movies have been on Tubi it's great we, we probably owe you quite a bit of money <laughs> we don't owe them jack shit yeah, they're we a don't. free streaming service Kyle <laughs> you can watch movies on them for free that's what we're doing they owe us money for recommending people to their stupid shit service I mean the service is fine actually here let me read okay I'm gonna cut the last uh, I'm just gonna end on this hey Tubi you're great yep. please sponsor us <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>